Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of vasculitis and look at the different mechanisms as how uh, vasculitis can occur. This is an overall picture to try to get our minds around how the immune system responds uh, in different types of vasculitides. So vasculitis is inflammation of the blood vessel, resulting in damaged vessels, leading to potential complications such as tissue ischemia or aneurysms. Vasculitis classically refers to the arteries rather than the veins because the arteries are the ones that are affected usually in vasculitis. Vasculitis can be primary or secondary. Primary vasculitis is its own disease and secondary vasculitis being secondary to a drug, another disease or malignancy. Primary vasculitis are classified into the size of the blood vessels affected. There is large vessel vasculitis, such as those diseases affecting the aorta and its main branches, medium vessel vasculitis, such as those affecting the branches of the kidneys, and small vessel vasculitis, which affect the arterioles and the capillaries. The medium and particularly the small vessel vasculitis are the types which present with cutaneous, the skin findings, such as purpura and petechiae because the smaller blood vessels are more superficial to the skin, right? The pathophysiology of vasculitis is unclear, but it's thought to be primarily immune-mediated. Because there are different types of vasculitis, the pathological findings, and therefore the pathophysiology, would be slightly different. This is an overall video looking at the different pathological mechanisms that could be resulting in vasculitis. Let's learn a bit about uh, the vessel layers first. The lumen is where the red blood cell platelets and other proteins and cells circulate. The artery is made up of the tunica intima, composed of the inner endothelial lining, basement membrane, and inner elastic fibers. The tunica media, which contains the smooth muscle cells and outer elastic fibers, and then you have the tunica externa, which is basically the adventitia, which contains the vasa visorum. The vasa visorum is essentially the blood vessel's own blood supply. Within the adventitia, you can find immature dendritic cells, which is an antigen-presenting cell waiting to mount an immune response. White blood cells, including monocytes, which are also an antigen-presenting cell, circulates the vessels and ready to mount an immune response. If a virus, bacteria, or an antigen is in our circulation, they can be picked up by antigen-presenting cells. If the pathogen invades the vessel layers, the antigen-presenting cell in the adventitia can also pick uh, this up and mount an immune response. The antigen-presenting cell, being the dendritic cell or the monocyte, can carry the antigen of the pathogen to nearby lymph nodes where immature lymphocytes reside. Here, the antigen-presenting cell presents the antigen to the lymphocytes and activates CD4 T lymphocytes. Activated CD4 lymphocytes, which is also called uh, the T helper cell, then activates cytotoxic CD8 T lymphocytes and also B cells. Activated B cells matures and become plasma cells, the cells responsible for producing antibodies. The antibodies produced should target the pathogen. However, in vasculitis, the antibodies may cross-react to the blood vessel because of molecular mimicry between the antigen of the pathogen and the blood vessel uh, layers. Alternatively, the immune response mounted by the antigen-presenting cells initially could be from our own antigens, which are being picked up by the antigen-presenting cells accidentally. The activated CD8 T lymphocytes are primed to attack the antigen, but again, can attack the blood vessel uh, instead because of similarities, the molecular mimicry. Another possibility to consider is that if dendritic cells in the adventitia are activated, they can also begin releasing chemokines, a chemical attractant for immune cells, including CD8 and CD4 T lymphocytes. This will mount an immune response from the deeper layers of the blood vessel first and can potentially result in chronic changes and granulomatous changes seen in some types of vasculitis, such as giant cell arthritis, takayatsu arthritis, 
and anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody-associated vasculitis. Let's look at the mechanism as to how antibodies actually play a role in vasculitis, some types of vasculitis. The antibodies are produced by the plasma cells and, as mentioned, can cross-react to the endothelial lining. But they can also form immune complexes by binding onto one another and then deposit in the blood vessels. Another mechanism is that during an infection or inflammation, the circulating neutrophils are usually primed to migrate to the tissue to help in the inflammatory response. In some types of vasculitis, antibodies can actually bind onto these circulating neutrophils and trigger a somewhat premature activation. The premature activation causes the neutrophils to release reactive oxygen species and further more pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines to attract more neutrophils. This is seen in anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies associated vasculitides, where circulating antibodies bind onto neutrophils antigens and actually trigger neutrophil activity. The antibody immune complexes I mentioned earlier contributes to the pathophysiology of some types of vasculitides. They deposit in blood vessels and can trigger complement activation. Complement proteins are proteins circulating in the blood ready to be activated. And essentially, its activation results in three main things. Firstly, in vasculitis, it can cause endothelial cell lysis. Secondly, the activation of complement can trigger phagocytes to eat up uh, cells of the vessel through opsonization. And thirdly, complements can act as pro-inflammatory cytokines promoting the inflammatory response. Immune complex mediated vasculitis is seen in vasculitides including henoxonin purpura, polyarthritis nodosa, and secondary vasculitis such as from systemic lupus erythematosus. Inflammation of endothelial cell lining and the deeper layers of the blood vessel causes vessel wall injury. In some vasculitis types, which have cutaneous manifestations, you can actually see neutrophil infiltration into the vessel wall. This is termed leukocytoclastic vasculitis. Examples include drug-induced vasculitis, viral vasculitis, and then you have your primary small vessel vasculitis such as Wegener syndrome and Churg-Strauss syndrome and Henoch-Schonlin purpura. You have to realize that the damaged blood vessel will release debris and cytokines and other factors which will further promote the inflammatory response, recruiting more immune cells. The injured blood vessel with the subsequent inflammation and also leukocytoclastic pattern will express itself as a palpable purpura, which is a classic feature of small to medium wall uh, vessel vasculitis. Here is an image of uh, classic palpable purpura, usually uh, as a result of a leukocytoclastic pattern. When there is vessel wall injury, the body's mechanism is to repair the blood vessel. This is done through hemostasis. Hemostasis involves vasoconstriction to reduce blood flow to the damaged area, platelet plug formation to form a temporary plug, and coagulation to form the fibrin mesh. Now, fibrinoid necrosis is a histopathological term to describe essentially necrosis of blood vessels. Following hemostasis, the body will repair the remaining tissue and clear the fibrin mesh through activated plasminogen. Despite the vessel being repaired through fibrosis, the vessel will never be the same, especially if the elasticity of the artery is affected. Complications of vasculitis include stenosis, especially during the active period of, of inflammation, leading to lumen narrowing. Lumen narrowing is due to a number of mechanisms. Firstly, infiltration of cells leading to inflammation and destruction to the vessel layers. Secondly, the thrombosis and fibrin mesh 
as a mechanism of repair, can cause stenosis, and thirdly, hyperplasia, fibrosis, and thickening of the artery wall as a result of inflammation can result in narrowing of the blood vessel. Lumen narrowing can lead to tissue ischemia and organ dysfunction, and possibly necrosis. Vessel injury from inflammation weakens the vessel wall, which may lead to aneurysm formation. An aneurysm is defined as a, a dilation of blood vessel that is greater than its normal size. In summary, vasculitis is inflammation of the blood vessel. The primary vasculitides are classified by the size of the blood vessel affected, although there is definitely overlap. These include small, medium, and large vessel vasculitis. The pathophysiology is thought to be primarily immune-mediated through a variety of mechanisms. Complications of vasculitis include organ dysfunction through reduction in blood flow from lumen narrowing and aneurysm formation from weakened blood vessels.